Martin Fong, thank you very much for talking to us today. Yeah, my pleasure. Tell me about Next City. Now, mm -hmm. that's your, this is your business. You're an entrepreneur. What does Next City offer? Well, this will be the very first uh, civic platform you know, to be established here, especially for this city of Hong Kong, um, on urban innovations. Because we can see that our public spaces are actually deteriorating in terms of quality. So we see the urgent needs you know, to establish a civic platform, a bottom-up approach, yes, um, to improve the quality of public spaces here. What do you want exactly? How, what, what is your vision for the public spaces here in Hong Kong and for the people here? Well, uh, actually we want to start with something really small. We believe in the power of acupuncture. So we will start with all these, I would call, acupuncture projects. Even starting, you know, take, take an example, you know, flower pots, you know, just flower pots. And in urban terms or in urban scale, it's transformed into planter boxes. And you can see all the planter boxes here in Hong Kong. You know, it's not just it's that they are ugly, but you know, they are blocking the ways and they are not contributing to the quality of our public spaces. So to us, planter boxes are not just planter boxes. They could transform like um, a kochak space into a playing field for kids or even for elderly. Why not? Yes, and yeah. um, Or it could be transformed into an outdoor library under the flyover, you know, all this leftover space. And they could, you know, we could hold some book swap events, you know, in this, what we call the outdoor libraries, you know, okay. um, formed with these flower pots. And you can see lots of back lanes in Hong Kong, uh, quite miserable yes. in conditions. But we could also use flower pots to transform them, you know, to grab some foldable ch chairs into a place for chilling, you know, yes. <laughs> or just sitting okay. out. Yes. Now, are you doing this on your own, or have you got a team? Yes, we've got a team, quite a multidisciplinary team. You know, people um, on advocacy, journalism, to urban planning, architects. And of course, we have people to, because this, this is a social enterprise, so we need to develop a very robust business model to make it workable and hopefully sustainable. <laughs> yeah. And tell me, what was the process like um, as a social enterprise mm. and, and gaining the support? What was that experience like? Well, actually, um, we started with a crowdfunding platform. Yes, because we believe in the power of bottom-up approach. So we are asking people to back our campaign projects with their own money. And how did you do that? Through social media, like on Facebook? Or on Facebook, yes, on social okay. media, yep, um, predominantly. And uh, we have some advertising events, to, um, hosting events, you know, um, live events, I would say, you know, in public spaces to advocate this idea of you know, engaging all the 99% of our populations to remake Hong Kong and to transform it into a better place. Because as an architect, you know, I find that you know, I am actually serving 1% of the population. You know, and this 1% of the population have all the say, have all the power and resources to shape our city where we live in, no matter you like it or not. So this is my dream or you know, my vision to empower the rest, you know, this 99% of the population to have a say of, of our city and yeah. the design of our city. So you, yes, you mentioned you're an architect, that's, mm. your, that's your background, so right. of course you're perfectly qualified to be um, running Next City. Mm -hmm. Are you going to maintain your practice as an architect at the same time or do you want to focus on Next City full time? What's, what are your so plans So actually now I'm focusing full time on this new in initiative because I think I have to devote my full time, my full passion to make it workable and you know, to scale it. To a certain sense. But you have to convince the government, and there are many levels in the government exactly. in Hong Kong. What is that like? How do you get over that challenge? Well, that's why you know I think I I'm holding a you know a favourable position as an architect, working with the government and developers before, because there are lots of quite a, portion, a proportion of public spaces are owned by the profit, uh, private developers. Yes, like Times Square, you know, you name you name it, uh, or even the space below HSBC headquarters. And um, so we could find some niches to work with the government with all what I would call the public space, a uh, private space owners, mm. you know, and developers to erect this 
urban furniture or urban amenities you know, in a permanent way, not as a pop-up thing. Because yes. you know, um, in these days, we have this pop-up trends, you know, flash events. You know, yes. So you, you know, you, yes. the most famous one is the parking day. It yeah. started in San Francisco. So you have one day you know, using a parking lot to do picnicking, whatever. Right. But for our initiative, we want to develop this app that we are going to erect permanent things. Yes. And what's been the response from the government and the developers so far? Uh, actually, already supportive? we have kicked off quite uh, substantial conversations with the government. Of course, with, uh, with some of the more forward-looking guys, you know, Great. and more, yes, creative guys, you know, within the government. And there are some. Actually, they, the response are quite positive, you know, Great. amazingly. Great. You know, they, you know, they, they know all the problems there too. So they actually, they welcome a kind of um, bottom-up approach, you know, um, um, a non-governmental you know, organization to advocate this whole new idea of remaking our public spaces you know, in a qualitative way. Congratulations. <laughs> Next city, I look forward to enjoying it here. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us, Martin. <laughs>